I just got back from a summer adventure with my wife, and as I've been known to do, I took a few film cameras with me. But when deciding which camera to bring for the trip, there were some things that I had to think about. This was a family trip, I guess, so it couldn't just all be about my film photography. So the primary camera that I ended up bringing on the trip had to do some stuff. And what I mean by that is I didn't want to take any of my slower cameras. If you've watched this channel for a long time, you probably know some of the cameras that I own. The Leica M6, an Intrepid 4x5, the Mamiya M645, and so on. The common denominator amongst all those cameras are they're a little bit slow, save for the Laka, which is only slow because I'm not really good at it yet. But I know what you're probably thinking. As gear whore, I mean film photographers, you know what's coming next. And when looking to buy this next camera, I had a few things in mind. First of all, I wanted the camera to be very durable. On this trip, I was going on a cruise, going to the beach, I wanted the camera to be able to take some knocks. It couldn't be a chintzy plastic thing that I was gonna break in five minutes. It'd probably be passing through my luggage in TSA. Needed to have some strength about it. Also, I wanted this camera to be autofocus. I didn't want it to stand in the way when something really cool or interesting happened on the trip, like swimming with sharks. It also stands to reason that if I wanted the camera to autofocus, I also wanted it to Auto meter. Again, just want things to move quickly so I'm not standing around fiddling with settings while cool things are happening all around me. And also, I wanted the camera to be easy to load. I didn't want to be standing out there fiddling around trying to load the camera. It needed to load relatively easy. There were quite a few options that fit the bill, but the camera that I ended up going with was one that I'm well familiar with, as this is my second copy of the camera. I've owned this one once before, and that's the trusty Nikon F100. And I already know there are going to be folks in the comments saying, it's actually a Nikon? Um, no, it's America, it's Nikon, it's what we call it. And you're just lucky it's Nikon and not Nikon. At some point, I'm gonna do a whole video for you in my Eastern Kentucky dialect. And the Nikon F100 takes me all the way back to my entry point into film photography. As many years makes no difference a decade ago when I was in law school. And just to give you a brief rundown of the story, I was in law school browsing Ken Rockwell's website and the film bug got a hold of me. Long story short, I got on eBay, bought an F100. After a while, life got really complicated, ended up selling my F100. And here we are much like I do, circling back again. So bring us back to the present. Why did I end up deciding on the Nikon F100? Well, at this point, I've been on enough vacations and enough trips to know that especially if I'm bringing someone like my wife or my kids, um, the camera has to be able to function really quickly. I have a really good idea at this point of the challenges that are gonna be faced by trying to get your images in those really difficult circumstances, like on a trip like that. The main reason that I end up filming on my cell phone, my iPhone, rather than my actual Sony a7R camera is because of those same circumstances, right? I want the camera to be very portable. I want it to move quick. I want it to be able to easily capture what I'm looking for. So that same need for speed and shooting economy is what led me to the Nikon F100. So this video is not gonna be a comprehensive review, but I am gonna talk about some of the key highlights of the camera. As you can probably see by its slightly bulky design, the Nikon F100 is a single lens reflex camera. It's got a mirror box inside, the mirror flaps up and down, allows you to see the image in real time. The the camera was introduced by the Nikon Corporation in 1999. I know it's hard to believe that this camera has been around that long, but at the same time, when this camera came out, I was 12. So I guess at this point, we're both getting a little old. And, and this camera is kind of positioned at a unique place in Nikon's camera lineup at the time. It was kind of their entry point into their professional film cameras. It was kind of positioned as a prosumer camera in contrast with the Nikon F5, which was their flagship film camera at the time. And the Nikon F100's development can be traced all the way back to the origination of the Nikon F mount and the F series cameras, incorporating and iterating on many of the designs over the really long time that Nikon had been developing the F system. The Nikon F100 was designed to be a very versatile camera. It was designed to meet the demanding needs of professionals, but it was also designed to be user-friendly enough for consumers to be able to use the camera as well. So it really bridged the gap between their two product lines. The camera has a little bit of weight to it, and that's because the camera featured a metal chassis, and then on the outside, it has a polycarbonate design. So the camera is really strong, really durable. It's gonna be able to stand up to some knocks. One of the key factors that I was looking for when I was searching for the camera. And one thing that's really nice about this camera is the way it fits in your hand. I'm used to using mirrorless cameras and much smaller camera designs at this point, and it feels so good to have an SLR, a really good, really deep grip that if you've got slightly big hands like I do, um, you're able to really grip the camera. And if you used any of Nikon's cameras over the years, the camera controls will be very intuitive, right down to pushing the on-off lever the other direction uh, to cause the little LCD screen at the top to illuminate. Just like my D800, just like my D850. And getting to one of the main reasons that I ended up choosing the Nikon F100 is it's really modern, really fast, auto-focusing system. And the end result
result of that is the camera provided very fast, very accurate autofocusing, even in really challenging situations like really low light. And this was gonna come in handy on my trip. Although this is a feature that I never really use much, and especially with film process being what they are, but the camera also featured a very fast, continuous shooting mode. And because the camera is an SLR design, the camera features a very bright, very large viewfinder with almost 95% frame coverage. Image is really easy to see in the viewfinder, and it's one of the strongest points of the camera. The camera features all the usual metering modes, and is compatible with a wide range of Nikon accessories, including the flashes and all that kind of stuff. So really awesome, really compatible. Um, whatever Nikon gear that you've got on hand, this camera's probably gonna work with it. There is at least one major caveat with the camera, one exception, one little piece of trouble that it is compatible with. Dealing with the size and weight of this camera, it does have some heft to it, but that's one of those trade-offs, right? The size and weight comes from a really, really good place. The fact that it has a metal chassis and it's made from really durable materials. I mean, it's obviously a trade-off. You can find much smaller, much lighter knock-on SLR cameras, but the size and weight of the knock-on F100 does mean that you're getting a camera that's gonna stand the test of time, gonna be able to withstand a few knocks. So that's something to consider. All in all, the knock-on F100 is a fantastic camera. It's really easy to shoot and the camera performed extremely well on my trip and I look forward to spending a lot more time with it. This being my set this being my second time with the camera, it's obviously one of my favorites. It's a camera that I don't think you can go wrong with. It's a durable, bulletproof design that's gonna be able to shoot for years, and it's easy enough to find parts for that folks are gonna be able to continue working on this camera for years to come. So the Nikon F100 is a great choice. Look, I know in the film photography space, there's this movement towards shooting older, more retro camera designs, and I'm guilty of that too. I mean, look at, look at my shelf back there. I love those old things as well. But if you're really serious about photography and actually want to be able to shoot shoot and have an easy time doing it, not always being out there struggling, fiddling with settings. I mean, let's face it, they're just situations that you're gonna encounter that are gonna call for a much faster, much more convenient shooting system than, let's say, a Laka M6 or a Mamiya M645, which is my medium format camera that I love to use. Sometimes you're just gonna need a camera that you can just go out and shoot. I think every film photographer needs a camera that you can just pick up, take outside, and go shooting with it and not have to put too much thought into it. And when it's got the performance and delivers the image quality that you're gonna get from the Nikon F100, and the Nikon F mount lenses, I mean, obviously it's a no brainer. So I think given the build quality, the lens selection, the whole package that you're getting with the Nikon F100, I think it's a tremendous value. And the best part of all is these cameras at this point can be had for as near as makes no difference, $200. So if I had any suggestion to you, if I were gonna recommend you one camera to buy on my entire channel, um, the Nikon F100 is definitely one to pick up because I think it's a camera that's really easy to use. It's gonna last for years and I think you'll have a great time with it. But if you're watching this video and you're thinking, hey, Isaac, I've got a lot more than $200 and I want something made of titanium and it looks really sexy. Well, if those are the things that you're looking for, well, then I've got a camera for you. Why don't you watch this video about my Contax G1? I think you'll really enjoy it. But before you go, if you wouldn't care subscribing, it would mean the world. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.